This documentary contains a document that was recently revealed in the Oxford Historical Library and could open new doors for understanding the Oriental civilization. What is this document, and for what purpose was it written? In general, the view of the majority of Westerners towards the Orientals, especially the Islamic East, has been of the inferior and barbaric, and consequently they considered themselves as the upper class and Muslims as people who are devoid of any wisdom and thought. For example, Alexis de Tocqueville, a French politician, says, Through my studies, I have concluded that there are few deadly religions in the world, and Mohammed's is one of them. Elsewhere, the French philosopher and historian Gustave Le Bon writes, None of the Oriental traditions was addressed as much as polygamy in Europe. European writers consider polygamy to be the foundation of Islam. Such a hostile view was expressed in many other extreme cases. For instance, Dante, the Italian poet and writer of Divine Comedy, describes an imaginary journey to hell, purgatory, and heaven. Muhammad and Ali were severely tortured in hell. Undeniably, it can be imagined that how this writing and many similar manuscripts had a profound influence on the minds of Westerns through past centuries. Unsere Botschaft, unsere deutliche Botschaft ist, wir, wir werden den Islam besiegen. Und die Wahrheit ist, meine Damen und Herren, dass der islamische Kultur, dass unsere Kultur, der islamische Kultur weit überlegen ist. However, over time, few Orientalists emerged who sought to paint a better picture of the East. Professor Hassan Abbas is a university professor in the United States whose field of activity is Oriental and Islamic studies. I'm Hassan Abbas. I'm a professor of international relations at uh, Washington DC in USA. Um, I did my PhD in uh, international relations from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, Tufts University. There are, are a variety of reasons for this um, and some of the reasons have to do with the, the bias, uh, you can say, or the critique that the Western world had about Islam. Islam was always seen um, in a slightly negative light, if I may call that, um, historically because it was seen as a religion that challenges uh, the other faith systems which were prevalent in the West, especially in the European context. Um, so that's why th that th there was a reluctance to allow Islamic scholarship. That's why biographies, history in a light, uh, in terms of spirituality, in terms of the strength uh, of, uh, of faith, in terms of the wisdom of Islam, there has not has been much focus. Also, about 300 years ago, at the same time as Majlisi in the Safavid era, Simon Oakley, a professor at Cambridge University, wrote an important book on the history of the greatest civilization of the East and Islam. The title of this multi-volume book is History of the Saracens. In this work, he tried to take an unbiased look at important parts of the early history of Islam. According to the publisher of the book for the next editions, many scholars and researchers consider this book as the most complete and correct narration of the Arab prophet and his successors. In the introduction, Oakley criticizes Western scholars who speak insultingly of the East and Muslims, saying, 
Their views prevent further research on Islam. He attributes this to the lack of proper study of the East and goes on to compare East and West, saying, while Western writers are constantly talking about polygamy, they have never thought about how Easterners express their disgust with prostitution and corruption in Europe. Or when they see a man and wife who live together for 40 years in Europe have a problem with their responsibilities in the family, how will they laugh at us? It should be noted that the social and cultural concerns about Europe and its comparison with the Islamic community, written by this English university professor, date back to 300 years ago, not 2021. What made of such a different and unbiased view of a Muslim man in that era? The answer to this question was published in a printery at the beginning of Fleet Street in London in 1717. The book was found for the first time in the Bodleian Library of Oxford University recently. After completing and publishing the History of the Saracens, Oakley decides to extract and publish the best part of this book separately. Sentences of Ali is the name of this book. According to experts, this newly discovered treatise is a translation of parts of the important book of Muslims, Naj al-Balaga. Interestingly, he published a short booklet which had some statements and quotable quotes of uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam. And it's so interesting because at that time there was not, not much focus. The Western academia or the Western scholarship on Islam uh, was not much aware of um, Imam Ali. So he picked, probably he picked Najul Balagha at that time. He uh, translated some of the sentences. He must be given credit that he was the first one who introduced Imam Ali 300 years ago uh, to the Western audience. He dedicates this treatise to the funder of his original book, Thomas Freak, a member of the British House of Commons in Hannington. The price of this work was six pennies at the time. In this initial edition of the book, the name of Imam Ali was mentioned as the fourth caliph. However, in the only available version, the fourth caliph was corrected to the first caliph by pen. In this treatise, he says, what I am presenting here are wise sentences to guide human beings in important matters, plus moral lessons. These are the words of the son of Abu Talib, whose complete book, I guess, is worth no less than our Bible. Three hundred years after Oakley's death, Hassan Abbas has written a book to better introduce Imam Ali to Western society, published by Yale University Press. The book, The Prophet's Heir, The Life of Ali ibn Abi Talib, is a biography of um, Hazrat Ali alayhi salam. It focuses on Imam Ali's history. So the book talks about Ali's justice. The book talks about the difficult time Ali had to go through during the initial years after the death of uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, how he used his wisdom, how he used his patience. He never, he knew it was his right to be the first caliph, but he never challenged uh, through military means anyone else. He never used violence. It is, the book is about Ali's life, his justice, his egalitarianism, his patience and his spiritual status, which is unmatched, which is unparalleled. And in today's world, Ali's life is so extremely important for interfaith reasons, for connecting the Muslims with the West. In the following introduction to Mr. Farka, Oakley writes, Some theoreticians believe that the wisdom of a nation can be measured by the amount of common advice and counsel in their community. With this motive, 
He presents the point that the advice that he received from the successor of the prophet, peace be upon him, can be a correct model not only for understanding the Islamic East, but also for guiding human beings. The points that are strongly under censorship in the West and even East. Then he adds more description regarding his work. The Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphs were staunch opponents of Ali, and despite spreading hatred and insulting him, the names of Ali and his sons never disappeared from history.